The Pocono Mountains is the birthplace lead to a Pocono wonderland of untold pleasure. Winter in the Poconos, clear and crisp. It's called the land of the waterfall. A recipe for romance. <laughs> So what is a county commissioner and why are you one? So a county commissioner is the administrative arm of county government. Um, we deal with the financial aspects of the county. We fund everything. Our role is, like I say, is quality of life. There's three of us, um, me and two other county commissioners, um, operate that entire section of the county government. There, of course, is the judicial system, which our role with that is funding. But mainly we deal with human services, um, the correctional facilities, all of these things that deal with um, the life of the residents of the county. And you're the commission chair, correct? I am the commissioner chair, have been for um, eight years now. How is a county commission set up in Pennsylvania? You know there are different uh, classes of county, right? So how does that work? Well, there is. We are a class six county because that's all um, controlled by the population of your county. We sit at 58,000 people, so we're on the low side of a class six county. We live in a relatively small county. Um, 58,000 people spread over 550 square miles is really not that, you know, it's a big county with not really a lot of people. So there's a lot of open space here in this county, which is what makes Camp Pike County so um, enjoyable to reside in. We're so fortunate today to be with Matt Osterberg. He's the commission chair of the Pike County Commissioners. We're having a conversation on Pocono Perspectives. So Matt, tell us um, why you are a commissioner and what you do before that. So I always was involved in local uh, government and local um, uh, initiatives, you know. So becoming a county commissioner seemed like my next step in my career as a local official. Um, prior to this, um, besides that, I had a job at Lures Hardware for 35 years, and then I was also, at the age of 28, I became the uh, borough councilman, and by the age of 30, I was the borough president. I served in that position in Milford Borough for 25 years. Um, over that time, I also was um, uh, became the borough historian. Serving on that board, though, was an extreme interest because I served with many older gentlemen at that time. I was younger, 28 years old. Um, they were my age now, um, but these were longtime residents whose families had been here for generations. And just hearing their stories about Pike County um, and, and the stories that they heard from their grandparents just interested me even more in Pike County history. Um, I'm a Pennsylvania, a Penn State graduate in history, um, so that really played into what I was, what I went to school for. So, you know, listening to people like Merrick Quinn tell the story of his grandmother sitting in 1889 at the 100th anniversary of the uh, Constitution, the setting of the monument on Sarah Street. These are, these are coming from um, people who heard this from their grandmothers about what it was like to be living in Milford Borough then. Um, and how quaint and beautiful a town this is, um, and how it developed into what the town is now, which is still a quaint little beautiful town, which is also, you know, maybe the cornerstone because it's the county seat of a quaint little um, county like Pike County. There was so much more of a story in, in not just Pike County, but the whole entire region, whether that would be New York or New Jersey, and how we all played into developing this region. It wasn't just Milford that did that, it was all of Pike County. You mentioned 1879, 1889, and we talked a lot about this beforehand, but take us back maybe 150, 200 years before that. What would Pike County have looked like? Who would have been here at the time? And how did it develop into where we're at right now? So the Pike County region that we know as Pike County now was settled firstly in 1732 by the Quick family. You know, here prior to that, and during that same time, with the Lenape Nation. Um, the Native American Indians were here. This is with their settlement. Um, you know, there's lots of stories about what went on between the two. And by 1796, the real region of Milford Borough is developed and laid out by Judge John Bittis. So um, one person owned the whole borough. One, bar one person owned the whole borough. The streets are named after his children. Um, the alleys are either named after berries or fruit trees. By 1814, Pike County becomes its own county, and it becomes Pike County, named after Zebulon Pike, who was a hero in the War of 1812. So in 1814, um, Milford Borough becomes the county seat. Influx of people start to come in here. Pike County is formed, and here's the county government now in Milford Borough. We have a population then of maybe 6,000 people, you know, and it becomes a tourist area. Some of the folks watching may hear some squeaking in the backgrounds because of the building we're in right now, which is a beautiful building, the community house here in Milford. Folks are really working in it. There are a lot of offices, and you've had such a huge part to play in 
this building where we're located now. Can you tell us a little bit about it? The so, so this building was, um, was originally owned by the Pinchot family. The Pinchot family came to this region of Pennsylvania in around 1814. They then developed a business here, um, selling just general goods in the region. They lived on this property that we're sitting in right now. This is the Milford Community House. The story is that it was originally the Dimmick Inn. They moved here, they rented part of the building from the Dimmick family, and then over time they became owners of this. Um, and it, but it was sat on a different side of the street. It was moved by horse, and, horse teams, correct? And well, wagons, is it, that right? it would have been moved in the, 18, in the 1890s, so it sat in the other corner for a number of years where they lived. Where was the community house five years ago and where are we today in the building we're sitting in? It served very well as the Pike County Public Library for nearly 100 years. Five years ago, the Pike County Public Library built a new facility just down the street. So now the board of directors, which I serve on as the president of the Milford Community House, had to find a use for this building. So we, we partnered with organizations like Pocono Mountain Visitor Bureau, um, Economic Development Authority, and instead of having them located in different buildings in the county, we said, why don't you come here, become a partner with us, help us share in the expenses. So now we renovated the building. The community house board was able to raise funds. We spent right now probably about a half a million dollars fully renovating this building back to 18, I'm gonna say 1890s. It's an absolutely beautiful building. I know that everybody's happy that has their home here, like yourselves, um, and we welcome people to come here. So, you know, this was a, a passion of mine to see this happen. Again, this is, this is leaving a legacy in this community sure. um, because it's the history of our community and, you know, and, and celebrating the Pinchos is really important for everybody in this county. Um, if they haven't been to Great Towers or they haven't been to the Visitor Center or Forestal, you really need to go there and you really need to see what importance that they, they created this legacy. I didn't. All we did as a board is we just enhanced it and made sure that it's going to be here for another hundred years. So that's, that's our one ask the two questions there. The pin shows Great Towers. Now that, so that really is a connection not only to this area in Pennsylvania, but to the whole United States. So tell us a little bit about Great Towers, and I want to get back to... Um, what the Pinchos did here for the community, but tell us a little bit about Great Tower. So James Pincho has a son, Gifford Pincho. He uh, talks to his son about becoming a forester. Forestry in the Pennsylvania, in the United States in the 1880s is, is um, relatively a new science. It's already a science in, in Europe. He sends his son over to Europe at times to study. He then goes to Yale University, and there they form the first Yale School of Forestry. Um, and Gifford comes out with a degree in, in forestry. And, but Gifford's view on forestry is also for conservation. His view is, is that the forest can be used as a productive crop, that we can, we can raise trees, we can cut trees down, we can use them into the development and use them for a resor renewable resource. He develops that whole science, and he becomes the first um, chief of the U.S. Forest Service. Um, under under um, William McKinley, and then later under Theodore Roosevelt. And Roosevelt was he? Did he visit? He, he was here. Theodore Roosevelt did visit here. They were they were quite good friends. Um, Theodore Roosevelt believed in that same philosophy of um, conservationism, um, and Gifford Pinchot leads the charge in that. Um, that's why there's many U.S. forests throughout the nation. There's a couple of them named the Gifford Pinchot Forest out west. I think there's some state forests that are named after Gifford Pinchot. He plays an integral part. In conservation, in fact, Milford is listed as the home of conservation um, because of his role in producing, making people aware of that we can have natural resources, we can use them, but we need to also conserve them and also figure out a way to renew them and make sure that they're renewable. You've written four books uh, about Pike County and various places within Pike County, and a lot of them have kind of related to the subjects you just talked about, um, like the D uh, uh, D and H. Correct. Right. So it seems like the Poconos early on in U.S. history really contributed to the Industrial Revolution, right? There is no doubt that the D&H Canal drove the Industrial Revolution. So the D&H Canal is a, is a hand-dug canal, first started in 1823, and by 1828 or 1826 it's fully operational. It's 107 miles long with 107 locks. It, it is an incredible story. Um, of ingenuity and engineering feat that is just, if people don't know about it, they should certainly learn about it because Honesdale, before this canal is built, literally has a small handful of people living there. It's called Dyberry. Honesdale, named after Philip Hones, 
who is the first president of the DNH Canal. He's at also at that time the mayor of New York City. So this was a massive amount of money that was brought into this region to dig this. This was private funding. The story is, is that the DNH Canal is the first million dollar corporation in the nation. The Warts brothers, who owned this corporation on their own, hired J.B. Jervis, that's what Port Jervis is named after, and they build this canal. They also build a gravity railroad. At the height of their business, they are moving four million, ton four million tons of coal a year. So this is an incredible amount of um, industrial that's moving through in American products. Not just coal, wood, bluestone, everything is going down that canal. When did the industrial piece of the economy here in the Poconos really start to decline and when did we start to see change, not only for Pike but the balance of the Poconos? You know, the canal is, is bringing lots of resources and lots of economic development into this region. Every town I've just mentioned to you, there's a lot of money. Over that time then, the DNH also realizes that the railroad is becoming very important. Now we move into tourism. You know, by the 1850s, Pike County has massive amounts of tourist hotels, and that's another whole industry. Was there something that started that, the tourism process? In the summertime, it would be hot in these, in these cities. They needed to find a place to have a respite. And what better place to come to than the mountains of the, of the Poconos? So I think it was more that they just wanted to be a, a relaxing area um, to come to. Um, in 1920, the, the residents were about 900. But in the summertime, the population of Milford Borough went to 5,000 people. That's how many hotels and rooms there were just in this little, what, half a square mile little town. Um, tourism was an incredible economic driver here, as it is today. You know, it's, it's our number one employer. Um, it drives every other business in this community to this day as it did 150 years ago. Well, I think, Matt, you, above everyone, are so responsible for carrying that legacy forward for successive generations. And before we wrap, which I hate to do because I think we could talk all day, I, I love history. You're just such a wealth of knowledge. I, I'm going to ask you to look in your crystal ball as a historian and as a county commissioner. And if you were to come back 100 years from now and visit Milford again, which I'm sure you'd love to do, what, what do you think you'll find here? I think what we will find is we will find Milford to be in the same condition as it is now, which is, and, may, and hopefully better with the preservation of what we all have. Everybody loves history. Um, you know, I use a term many times when we talk about the development of the county. We, knew, we need to have economic development. We need to have new facilities built. We need to make sure the quality of life, whether that's medical services. But the one thing we need to respect is we don't want to pave over paradise. You know, I know that's words from a song, but that's a really telling story that we don't want that to occur here. So I think what I'll see in 100 years, if I was able to come back, is I think I'll see Milford just in the, the condition as it is here right now. You know, we have, um, Milford Borough has put in some very strong ordinances for preservation of buildings, because, and it wasn't an easy task to do that. And I was involved in that back in 1999 because people are very sensitive about property rights and that. But at the same time, when we do that, we have to remember when we preserve these buildings, we preserve history. And what we do to one building affects the building next door. Um, everything is tied together here, and we need to continue to do that in this community. So 100 years, I envision Milford. The Dimmick Inn will still be here. <laughs> people can go over there and have a beer. People like you and I will be so, still sitting in this room, um, and it'll just be a the same quaint little community it is today. I, I really have a lot of faith that it will be, but I think people like you who devoted their life to public service and to their communities are, and, and I think the thousands, millions of guests that have come here are the beneficiaries of that. And I, I thank you so much, Matt, for spending this time with us today. And we're so fortunate to have spoken today with Matt Osterberg. He is the chair of the Pike County Commissioners. He is Milford Borough historian. He's written books. And we will show you those books. If you have a chance, you need to buy them. They tell a great story just like Matt does. Matt, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Chris.